Hi again, my name is Iran and welcome to part 3 of my Roll20 Master Series. This one is about the VTT Enhancement Suite or Roll20 Enhancement Suite which is one of the extensions I recommend you install before you even start playing. This is some advanced material but it's for both players and guides and this is something I still highly recommend that you use. First of all, let's talk about installing it. If you just look up the VTT Enhancement Suite or Roll20 Enhancement Suite by Justice Stormy Dobrila, you will find this page and from here you can go to the Firefox installation site and just do it from here. Very easy. To install the Chrome extension is slightly more difficult. Because the extension modifies a site with copyrighted content, then Chrome doesn't like it on the web store, so you have to do it manually. The installation process is slightly more hands-on, more complicated than what you're probably used to, but all the steps you need to do are right here. I follow them to the letter and everything works fine. Now let's talk about what it does. After you've installed the VTT Enhancement Suite and reloaded your Roll20 temp to make sure it takes hold, you will see two new buttons in your settings tab. The first one is the VTT ES Tools, which allows you to modify your query and advantage toggles for all sheets in the entire game. But the more interesting thing is the VTT ES Settings. I'll start by going over what's relevant for players and then I'll go into what's relevant for just GMs. Firstly, the Alternative Token Radial Menu. If you know the regular Roll20 radial menu, it's bulky, it's animated, it's annoying, so I recommend you turn this on, it's more compact, it's faster. Also disable animation so everything moves quicker and this saves a lot of performance when you're playing, especially in heavy maps. With the token status display adjustments, you can make sure that when you're not selecting your token that the markers are slightly faded out so you can see the token better and only when you click it then you see all the, the markers Folded. Now about the three things you can add to your character sheet to make using it much more convenient. Firstly is the character sheet ability macro generator which allows you to turn your character sheet's uh, attacks and features with about three clicks into macros that you can use without even opening your character sheet and I will show you that in a minute. The second is the character importer exporter which allows you to save your entire sheet as a JSON file including everything on it, including the token. It's very useful for saving your sheets and moving them from game to game or just for backups. Lastly, the character token editor allows you to edit your token and everything on it including the advanced features that the GM only, sh only sees straight from your character sheet. So if the GM doesn't know how to do it or you want to make sure everything is connected correctly, you can just do it yourself. So let's say you have a character sheet with some stuff on it, you've already entered, I didn't fill this out completely, but I did add an attack and I did add a spell so you can see how this looks like. If you happen to look at the other tab of your character sheet, you might have seen this. This is a dump from the database of all the numbers that compose your character, which the character sheet makes look pretty. On the side here you can add various abilities which are actually buttons you can attach to the token which will then show up up here or at the bottom uh, as the main macro bar and you can enter various Roll20 codes in here and make actions work but why do all the hard work when you have the macro generator? You just open the generate macros dialog, select your character sheet, select everything if you're having a spellcasting character, I suggest you do folders, otherwise no foldering. And click OK. It recognizes what you might want to use and the code that rel relates to it. And you just click OK, it generates it, and there you have it. Just make sure to set as token action. You can also hide the things that you don't want other people to see. And then when you unclick and reclick your character, here they are. The dagger, here's the attack, and the Eldritch Blast, also you can see the attack and the, and the damage roll, and it's all right there. If you have features on your character sheet, they will also show up here after you've added them, and they will output the chat. Do note that when your character gets more complicated, more features, more attacks, more spells, you might want to switch over to foldering. What foldering does is it separates actions, features, spells into various categories so you'll have a more compact view of your actions but they will still show up and you can access uh, all of them. You just uh, approve player attacks, features and cantrips. They show up right here and 
I click it, here's all of my attacks, here are my cantrips, and the feature is still here. So the second thing you can add to your character sheet is the export and overwrite. It does exactly what it says. You export your character, save it as a JSON file, or you choose a JSON file that you want to overwrite this character with, and you click overwrite. That's it. Very simple. The third thing that VTTS adds to your character sheet is the token editor, which allows you to edit all of the behind the scenes things on your, on your token that usually only the GM gets to see. And from here you can update the default token, which means the settings here will stay when you take your character and pull it from the journal, or you can update all tokens in the game with these settings, all tokens that represent this character sheet. Now let's talk about some GM specific features. The first one allows you to adjust your GM layer opacity if you switch to the GM layer and it's not solid enough or too solid, you can change it right there. The alternative page toolbar menu makes your page toolbar more compact, easier to read, with better scrolling, and makes everything easier to manage. Display current layer on canvas allows you to see at the bottom right of your screen which layer you are on, if you're on the token layer, or the map layer, or the GM layer, which helps you to prevent mishaps when you're trying to click a token, which is on the token layer, but you're on the GM layer instead. Or if you're trying to signal to your players with a ruler, but they can't see it because you're on the GM layer. Speaking of which, it also shows you when you're not using the selection tool and you can't pick up anything and you're wondering why you're trying to move a token but you're making a ruler instead. Something similar is draw token layer on tokens, which adds a little title at the bottom right of every token which tells you on which layer it is. You can even select which layers show this, for example if you don't want every map to show that yes it's on the map screen. Create token from URL does exactly what it says. You just find an image online, hopefully with a transparent background. Copy the URL, right click inside your map, and create token from URL, and there you go, the token's in the game. You don't even have to save it to your images. By the way, this is how the Roll20 marketplace and standard tokens work. They just input the image into your game. Now you can do it too. Same thing, for example, if you're creating a rollable token table, you can also just input URLs of tokens in here and it will show up on your table. Bulk macros are an incredible feature. If you have macro actions for tokens in general or for tokens specifically, you can select all the tokens you want and click right-click and select bulk macros. It will show you all the macros that these tokens have in common, and you can just click them, for example, your initiative, and all of the tokens you want are in the initiative, and you don't have to do it twice, or three, or four times. However, do note that if you have macros which offer a selection, you will have to select for each token separately. Roll and apply hit dice is kind of a subsection of bulk macros specifically for hit dice. If you have a token with a character sheet attached with a formula, an HP formula, then you can just select those tokens, right click and select hit dice, and it randomly generates and assigns the hit points to the bar of your selection. And that's it. You can roll random HP with two clicks of a button. Right now I'm using it to hide the action characters for my players, so they don't see an HP bar on everyone, so they don't know who's just a, a bystander and who's an NPC that might fight them. So just when the fight starts, I roll uh, hit dice for everyone, and I don't even know uh, the exact amount of HP, and the, and the game is more fun. Next, let's talk about some initiative modifiers. You can have that every time someone uh, clicks the initiative, the turn order opens. You don't have to open it yourself, and you don't have to manually add players who uh, rolled the initiative too fast. Everything just happens on its own. In addition to that, whenever you click next, you can have the current token whose uh, turn it is ping, and as you can see, it doesn't ping the hidden NPCs. You can even auto-select your NPCs when you click next, so you can automatically use your token actions. And the last one is you can have your camera automatically move to the token whose turn it is. This is useful if you're running combat in several spots and you need to move quickly between each one. It's very nice. Your mileage may vary. And that's it for the VTT Enhancement Suite. It's kind of advanced, it has more features, kind of fiddly, but it's extremely useful. It even makes performance of your Roll20 better, so I highly suggest that you use it. Thank you for watching. Stay good. Have fun.